Welcome to AP Chemistry at Hananiga High School. I'm Brian Brown. Today we'll pick, be picking up with part four of our lecture on acids and base and equilibrium. Today we'll be looking at section 16.7 and 16.8 from the Brown LeMay book. Um, what we're looking at today is weak bases. Yesterday we studied weak acids and uh, their relationship to Ka and icebox problems with weak acids. Today we're going to be doing the same thing with weak bases. Now one of the things I talked about yesterday uh, in class was that when you take a look at a reaction, you're throwing some acid or base in water, one of the things you need to be able to quickly do is determine whether it's really an acid-base reaction or acid or base reaction that we're talking about. And the way to do that is to look for hydroxide or hydronium on the product side. In this case, you see hydroxide here. So no, we know what we're talking about is a base reaction. And we set up the equilibrium expression. We're going to be setting, uh, setting that equilibrium expression. And we're not going to call it Ka like we did with weak acids. We're going to call it Kb. So the type of Kq we're dealing with here will be a KbKq. And when we're talking about a base, remember, a base is a substance that is a proton acceptor. So if we take a look at just the general uh, Kb for pretty much any base reaction, since in a base reaction we're going to have something that is reacting with water, and it's going to be accepting a proton. So if I end up writing it on the product side here as Hb, that means over here it would start out basically as a B minus. So it would accept that proton, and we would also end up with OH minus. So if that's our like general reaction for any kind of weak base situation, the Kb of that would be the concentration of the HB, which in this case, since this is our base and this is our acid, this would be our conjugate acid. And this would be our conjugate base. Now in this particular case, these are going to be AQ. This is going to be a liquid. And that's also going to be aqueous. So when you write the general uh, expression, what we're going to end up with is, is the concentration of each base, uh, HB times the concentration of OH minus over the concentration of B minus. Now keep in mind, these two things are really going to be a base and their conjugate acid. That's what's going to end up going into those two things. And remember, this is our base. And here would be our conjugate acid would be going into that. So the conjugate acid of that base. So that's the general KB expression for um, any base reaction. Now, just like Ka can be used to find H+, plus, which is what we looked at yesterday, Kb can be used to find OH-. minus. Remember, we don't have H+, plus in that equilibrium expression. We've got OH-. minus. But remember, once we know OH-, minus, we can use that to find POH or H3O+. Plus. And from there, we can get pH. And just like yesterday, we talked about the uh, larger the value of Ka, the stronger the acid was. Same thing would be with respect to bases. The larger the value of Kb, the stronger the base would be. So in looking at these particular constant, our Kb values over here, um, to me, I see that one right there jumps out as the largest value. So that would be something that is our strongest base in this particular set. Remember, the, the larger the K value, the greater the amount of ionization we're going to get in here. We're talking about ionizing into OH minus. So in this particular case, that would be our strongest base. So just like Ka has a relationship to, between acid strength, so does Kb to base strength. Now, a typical Kb problem will end up looking like this. What is the pH of a 0.15 molar solution of ammonia. And notice they're giving you the K problem, when, the K. Whenever you're getting a K, you're going to be setting up icebox. And you're going to be finding the equilibrium with respect to x. You'll have to substitute that into the equation, solve for x. So this is going to look just like the reactions did yesterday. So what we did yesterday and what we did today, the, the problems are going to look very, very similar to each other and have a very similar feel. And the things we did yesterday to try and simplify the math, we're going to do the exact same things today. So 5% rule is going to come into play today as well. So here is a particular problem. The question really is, what is the pH? Now the first thing you need to recognize is this is a base reaction. We're going to go to get OH minus. So we're going to end up finding out OH minus from which we can find pH. OH from which we can find H plus. One thing to keep in mind. Another thing that we talked about yesterday, remember when you see two sig figs, 
one of the things you should always pay attention to whenever you've got two sig figs that's going to mean two decimal places so when we get our final answer here our pH value is going to go to two decimal places so remember two sig figs two decimal places if you got a p value with two decimal places that's going to two sig figs as a concentration okay first thing you do here is set up your ice box now we know the initial concentration of our weak base was 0.15 at the beginning at time zero we have no products so those are going to be both be zero we're obviously going to be shifting to the right which means it's going to be negative x from the viewpoint of ammonia and positive x from the viewpoint of our NH4 plus and our OH minus so add those two together and we get our equilibrium concentrations those are both going to be x and we're going to end up with 0.15 minus x now if you recall yesterday one of the things we did in every single problem was we did this. We said we're going to neglect x. Now remember, every time you do one of these problems, write in neglect x. Cross that out and write neglect x so that you tell them on the AP test you understand why you're making this simplification here. And remember, we don't know at this point whether that was a valid step or not, but it will certainly simplify the math and avoid the quadratic. And if we didn't need to use it, then we might as well do that from the very beginning and avoid the quadratic altogether. So now at this point we have our equilibrium concentrations, which we can substitute into our K, or I'm sorry, this case, our KB expression. On top we're going to have X and X. On the bottom we're going to have 0.15, because remember we neglected X, and that simplified to 0.15, and that way we avoid the quadratic, and we end up with a simple situation solving for X. We get 1.6 times 10 to the negative third. Now, at this point, what do we have to check before we just get into calculating POH and pH? We have to check 5% rule. So we compare our value here of our OH minus to our original concentration. It's 1.1%. That's left in less than 5%. So yes, this is a good assumption, and we can totally avoid the quadratic at this point. So it was a valid to neglect X in this case. And remember, at this point, you do not have H plus or H3O plus, same thing. What you have is OH minus, since we're talking about a KB or base reaction. So when you take the negative log of that, you're actually getting the POH. And since it was two sig figs, two decimal places. So to get pH, we're going to subtract from 14.00. Your final answer here ends up 11.20. So handling KB reactions is really the exact same thing we did yesterday with KA reactions. So we don't really need to go any farther than that. All these problems are going to look the same. One thing to be careful of when you get your original reaction, make sure if it's an acid reaction, they're giving you KA, and if it's a base reaction, they're giving you KB. If not, you need to understand the relationship between KA and KB. It's going to add just a tiny little bit to our work if that happens. Now, KA and KB are related in this way. Remember, KW was our solubility product constant for the auto-ionization of water. Well, H plus times OH minus has to equal KW, and it turns out that the KA times the KB, so the KA of an acid reaction times the KB of the conjugate base set up as a reaction equals KW. So therefore, if you know one, you can always quickly calculate the other, but you have to remember KW equals one times point whatever you need times 10 to the negative 14th. So remember, that's 1.0 or 1.0 or whatever it is you happen to need. So if you know Ka, you can quickly find Kb. If you know Kb, you can quickly find Ka. Now, one of the things you need to understand about this relationship is that if you take a look at this reaction, I see OH minus on the product side, so I know I'm talking about a base reaction. So I know my K value would be a Kb in that particular case. So for this particular reaction between ammonia and water, Kb is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now, this KB is related to a KA value. We just talked about that on the previous slide. The question is, the KA of what? Well, what it's related to is its conjugate. So the KA of NH3 is basically NH3's conjugate, NH4+. Plus. So in this particular case, the reaction of NH4 plus thrown into water would look like this. So NH4 plus is the conjugate of our base, NH3. The Ka that we're talking about and trying to find here 
would be related to not the reverse of this reaction, but the reaction between the conjugate acid of that base thrown in water. So the relationship between Ka and Kb here, it's the relationship between this reaction, which is a base reaction, and the reaction between that reaction's conjugate base. When you throw it in water, you're going to get this equation. So you need to understand that it's not the reverse of the above reaction. If you look at that top reaction and the bottom reaction, they are not simply inverted from each other. We're talking about a separate reaction. So if the Kb of this upper reaction is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, the Ka that's related to that Kb would be the Ka for that base's conjugate acid, which would be NH4+. So the answer here is no, it's not simply the reverse of the reaction above, and that's why Ka does not equal the inverse of Kb. If you were simply reversing the reaction from what we looked at last chapter, it would be the inverse of the old K value. So remember, when you have a base reaction and you're looking at a Kb, the Ka that's related to that Kb is not the inverse of the reaction you're looking at. It's the Ka you would get if you took the conjugate acid of that base and threw it into water. And that ends our second set of notes.